Hi, I'm John Hildebrand. And I'm Chris Colotti. And today, we're going to talk about Cohesity's newest feature, Site Continuity. But first, to have a discussion about disaster recovery, you have to first have a discussion about RPOs and RTOs and SLAs in general. So Chris, it looks like we've got a nice diagram here that you're going to go through that details exactly where some of the evolution of some of the DR points that are being used in, in these solutions uh, have evolved and what they cover. Right. I mean, what we want to point out here is we're going to work from the bottom up and, and just quickly illustrate you know, what a lot of people already know, but for the sake of argument, the difference in, in where the struggle is between moving up the stack, right? So when we're dealing at the bottom and we're talking about backups and we're, we're trying to figure out what our RPOs and RTOs are, it all depends on your tolerance. And your tolerance might be fine to be able to have really far apart increments today. Now you may not, you may have to go a little bit further and we, that's where we see people doing snapshots and we can get those increments a little bit closer together. We can get more snapshots in the same time that we could do those backups. Moving all the way up, Today's that you've had you and I have had this conversation in the past with ransomware and things happening. You don't know when that's going to hit. So we start to look at continuous data protection. I'm not going to draw all of these, but your increments can be very, very close together. In, in our solution, for example, it can be within the minute. Well, we've got plenty of analysts out there who are telling us that a lot of uh, companies out there can't really even tolerate even less than 30 minutes of downtime in between some of these particular snapshots for data loss. So we have to get to a particular point where we're now talking more seconds to, uh, to minutes and less than that 30 minute to Agreed. area that a lot of businesses can no, longer, can no longer tolerate. And at the end of the stack is really where you get into that business continuity space, in my mind, where it's real time replication or almost near zero RPOs where this is happening almost instantaneously with a sync replication solution. And, and not every customer is in this space, but there's certainly some financials, people like that. What we need to figure out is where customers' tolerance points and or tolerance and pain points are between the bottom and the top. So I think now, since we've illustrated this, we can jump over and take a look at what the actual site continuity solution looks like and how it works. So John, we've covered the SLAs and some of the challenges with disaster recovery and, and the pain points for customers. Let's hit a, now what really makes up site continuity as a product. Sure, Chris. So as you can see here on the diagram that we have, a rather extensive diagram, I should, should say, the biggest thing that site continuity is bringing to the table is this new DR playbook. Now, if you remember everything from Helios, everything's covered under a single user interface. And this playbook and its associated designer tool is now part of that single user interface. So it's included as part of the standard Helios user interface that everybody connects to. So it actually comes in multiple flavors. We can now do, uh, we can do disaster recovery in two different flavors. The first one is going to be our traditional site to site. This is where we take a VMware site uh, from a data center, and we ingest that data into Cohesity. Now, once that data is ingested, somehow it has to get to the second site. So Chris, how exactly is that data going from site A to site B? Yeah, it's, there's a couple things that are gonna happen, right? And let's come back for one second back to the playbook. It's important to note that this is really a design tool. It's drag and drop. People can see more about it in a couple other videos that we have. But what you're going to do is establish your primary site and your failover site. Very tr in, the, in this scenario, it's very traditional site A, site B kind of environment, right? So to your point, you're going to have site A and you're going to ingest your data into the Cohesity uh, infrastructure. The designer tool as part of it is going to establish a, a replication job to another Cohesity appliance in your secondary site or your DR site, uh, site B. And we're gonna store that data over here until such time as you execute a failover. Now we have two types of failovers. We have a test failover and we have a regular failover. Test failover will deploy all of those virtual machines down to your VMware environment, and then you can click a button and tear them down. So it's easily used for testing the actual process, IP addressing, all that other stuff. If you issue a regular, a full failover, there's really no teardown operation. They're gonna live you know, on that virtual center on the other side. So this is very clean and cut and dry that you have to have site A and site B and the customer is managing both sides of the infrastructure, but we're actually managing 
the UI, the workflow, the design piece. It goes back to that control plane that we've always talked about. Mm -hmm. the, the playbook really is the control plane component that's pushing everything down to the data plane. So now as we move along from a more of a traditional site A to a site B construct, I can't help but notice we have Amazon Web Services out here and part of our Cohesity managed services that we have our uh, D, DR, DR as a service. DR yeah. as a service. So take me through exactly what we're doing. I would assume it's going to be very similar, except you're not managing infrastructure on the AWS side. Right. One of the, the, the pros and cons if you're if you're in this environment here is you've got to have this infrastructure, right? There's a there's a capital cost there to make sure you have your secondary site. When we're dealing with the as a service component or product, it's really pay as you go. So what does that mean? That means that there's this there's a cohesive part of the infrastructure that we manage. And when you sign up for the service, it's still very similar. We're going to be able to replicate this data up to Cohesity managed infrastructure, mm -hmm. right? And it's important to note that, you know, this is either going to be replication or uh, in the site to site, we can actually do CDP, continuous data protection. But once we get it up into our infrastructure, if you decide to do a test failover, you do actually have to have your own VPC. So it's important to know that you are actually managing your pay as you go virtual private infrastructure. And when you issue the failover command, we're going to do an EC2 conversion and push it into your VPC. Interesting. So I can see plenty of use cases for that. For an example, especially since there is a conversion process, maybe sandboxing a, a recovery over to this location. Because again, there is a difference between a VMware virtual machine and an EC2 instance. Absolutely. So ensuring that everything is working exactly according to your playbook is a good way to do that. And continuous testing, ensuring that all the latest updates that you're taking here also end up out here so you can ensure that everything is within the right time frame that you want for your SLAs. Yep. The key benefit really is that because it's pay as you go, you're not paying for those EC2 instances until you either initiate, initiate the test failover or the full failover. Where here, you've got to have this infrastructure stood up. The only thing you're really setting up in Amazon is your, your empty VPC with your subnets and some other stuff to actually put into the playbook. Interesting. So as Chris has mentioned, there are some videos that we're going to put below here that go through more of the process and the actual what, seeing the workflow in and of itself. So make sure to check out those videos below as well. And to find out more information about DR as a service, whether it's to AWS or to do some of the disaster recovery within, pay attention to our website at www.cohesity.com.